We are back on my boy Blue today, trying to get more stuff working in preparation for our engine coming back in a couple of days. So I want to knock out some more of the tedious stuff today. I want to make sure our fuel pumps work. I may need to up the ground size on the fuel pumps. I did use 20 gauge wire in the last video on this car and someone mentioned that might be too small. So I'll test it on the 20 gauge. I'm, I'm going to up it anyways to probably a 14 gauge wire uh, for the grounds, which is easy to do at this point. It's just tapping back into that harness again. I can just yeet out the old one. I'll probably just run brand new grounds inside of that harness. So get the fuel pumps working. I'm gonna get fuel level sensor working, which is a little bit complicated and a little bit stupid in this car. So the way we make fuel level work in this car is in a weird series of stuff. So this is the OEM diagram. This little square here is our instrument cluster. From the instrument cluster, we've got one wire that comes out goes to the primary fuel pump level assembly, then it goes off into a split over to the secondary because the way that these fuel pumps work is there's a, or not even the fuel pumps, the way that the fuel level sensor works is there's a saddle over the fuel tank and you've got one level sensor on this side, you've got one level sensor on that side. If you only pull fuel level from one side, you're gonna have an inaccurate reading. So you need to be able to run both of these in series back to the dash in order to display fuel level. It's kind of annoying, but it's how we have to do it. From our IC7, this little Little box now is our IC7. It's that digital dash. That's going to come out, go to fuel pump assembly main, then the main's going to split to the sub, and then the sub is going to split back to the dash. Now, luckily on here, we do have the pin out for everything, so that way we can pin out where it's going. And I already know which ones are on here because I pinned them last time. So I'm just gonna de-pin them, put brand new wires in there, and we're gonna rerun all of this. So this is where I wanna start today. So I've got all the base wires ran for the fuel level sensor and I kind of want to walk you guys through this before I sheath it all up so that way you guys can get a better understanding. So to do that, let's start up there where the cluster goes. Alrighty, so up here we've got one Deutsch connector. It's only got the two wires coming out of it. You guys will see a red one and a black one right there. Those run down behind the fuse panel there, comes down underneath the carpet, goes back behind everything here into the back seat. Now from there, you're gonna see some wires back here. So that red and black wire ends white right here. The black wire continues going along right here and then it wraps around to our fuel pump and that is the fuel level signal ground to the fuel level sensor primary. So this is your primary level sensor. Your secondary one is in there. This green wire is going to go on the other fuel level sensor and that's going to double back through the harness follow it along with the black wire until we get to the split. That green wire then follows the red wire, which is the signal or the AVI input, which will go to the secondary one. What's essentially happening is the signal's coming from the dash, following these wires going to the primary level sensor, leaving the primary level sensor, going to the sub level sensor in that one, leaving that and then going back and reporting the voltage change into the cluster. Now the mainly how to get it to read, after we do that, we have to calibrate it. I'm not gonna be calibrating it today. It has an old calibration in there. I need to add more values into that calibration because right now it's very touchy. If you go over any bumps, go left, go right, it drastically changes fuel level as those sensors move around. So I need to add more value points into the data graph to be able to kind of smooth it out a little bit more. But for the most part, this will make our fuel level work. So let me sheath these up, get them wired up, and then we will have a working fuel level sensor again, which is wired way better than I had it before. Fuel level is all working. Let me show you the harness real quick. It's all sheathed up, zip tied up and cleaned up. So we've got it running here, zip ties up, goes over to this side and then runs over to that side. Also, you guys can see the wires are just kind of temporarily in there. Uh, already verified it works. It's sitting at 0%. It's nothing really exciting to show you guys. I did drain the fuel tank out of this thing before I let it sit. Uh, so that way the E85 that was in here did not go bad. Next up, I'm going to jump onto wiring in the electronic steering rack just to kind of get that out of the way. 
I kind of just want to incorporate it into those connectors there. Should have done it before I put the heater core and everything back in because now the dash is in the way and I really don't want to have to take it all back out. Uh, but I think I'm going to just kind of route it up through here. I think that'll just be easier for me because that way this will just keep the engine stuff, the engine stuff. Like I did say, I did want to keep a grommet here. So that way there's other things that I can run through that. So I think I'll just put this on a Deutsch connector and then just run that Deutsch connector up into the engine or up into the cabin. Honestly, I think that'll just work out a bit better. Like I said, I just want to keep everything on these two harnesses here, engine only. So the blue wire from CAN is going to go to the red wire on the steering rack. The red wire from CAN is going to go to the green wire on the rack. And then we need a switched 12 volt source to go to the pink wire. And then on the two larger wires coming off, one of them is going to be ground. So I can just ground that wire out over here to our uh battery terminal battery terminal because that's that goes to the battery terminal and then that positive 12 volt will go over here to the positive side and i just need to put in an inline 80 amp fuse into that uh, which i'll order tonight so that way we can just permanently wire up the steering rack now what i was told is the steering rack will only work when the car is running ah that might be a problem because the car never knows when it's running i might have to integrate that into the ooh ooh that's going to that's going to be interesting hmm if it doesn't work, I'm going to have to put a hydraulic rack back on this. I'll make it work. I'll make it work one way or another. So let's uh, let's repin that to a Deutsch connector and run a harness up through where the grommet's going to go uh, and get all that kind of taken care of. art form. Let's go ahead and actually turn this into a harness. We'll put some capped on tape on here to actually harness it up a little bit to keep it as a strand. And then we'll go do the power steering rack side. And then uh, there's our three wires. So red is can, green is can, red with white stripe is switch 12 volt. Untangle. Don't do this with silicone wires either. If you're using something like Tefcel, like I'm using, probably more than free to do this, but if it's not Tefcel, I probably wouldn't do it. Silicone wires will just rip. Tefcel's a little, uh, it's a little stronger. There's the harness from the subframe to CAN communication and switch 12 volt. So the red and green are CAN, so it'll be red CAN to red CAN, green to blue, switch 12 to pink, or I think I believe it's like red with green stripe for switch 12 volt. There's my little piece of paper. Right here. So where's the harness that I just made? It's right here. No, red is blue, not green. No, green is red. Pink is switch 12 volt. Green is can red. Green is red. Red is blue, which in our case is our green. Red goes to blue which is green, so then red goes to green. What the fuck did I write? Blue is red, so red goes to blue. There we freaking go, holy shit. We've got CAN communication, switch 12 volt hooked up for the power steering rack and for the Haltech. So now for the power steering rack, I need to hook up the fuse 12 volt source to the positive post in the engine bay from the battery relocation we have in the trunk. I need to put an 80 amp inline fuse on that and hook up the ground. I don't have wire that is proper gauge for that quite yet, so I'll order that from Race Spec tonight. Aside from that, everything else is hooked up for this electro electronic rack at this point. These, all of this will get tucked up and made look pretty and whatnot, but like I said, right now we're just still going through like getting everything wired in. So right here, the green wires are indications of the blue can wires. The red is obviously to red. We'll plug into the actual Haltech itself, and this is the vehicle can communication for the stock ECM to talk to the Haltech. Here's the ignition switch for the 12 volt source for the power steering rack, which that should just be a switch 12 volt and it should just keep 12 volts as it switches over um, if not i can easily move that over to something else make it a little bit easier so all of that is now wired up so we have fuel level wired up now 
power steering rack, and Haltech vehicle can communication. To give you guys an indication of like how long this wiring stuff takes, those three wiring tasks alone have taken me four hours just for those four to make everything like harnessed, look pretty, route the way that it needs to route and everything like that. So less wiring that we have to do, like I said, with the engine coming back, I just wanna knock out all of the tedious stuff now. So I want to get the Haltech back in the car, get it plugged back in, get power turned on, and verify that we have vehicle cam communication. So let me plug everything in, plug the laptop into the ECM, uh, and just verify that everything is 100% solid on that. So it looks like I'm getting CAN communication, which is good. The ECM seeing it, I am getting a ton of error codes. If I can do this with my left hand, scroll over here, there's an absolute ton of error codes, mainly because the engine harness isn't hooked up, so it's not really gonna be able to see anything. What does CAN support? Accelerator pedal position, dash display, air conditioner request, boost gauge, brake pedal switch, fuel consumption display, SI drive, dash, tachometer, and vehicle speed sensors. So it does pull some stuff up, but I found that trying to make this work with an ECM that's not seeing engine information kind of just pisses off the whole car. So it should be seeing all the information it needs at this point. So I've got everything plugged in. So we actually, uh, we have CAN communication now, which is a good thing. Otherwise we'd have a CAN communication failure over here, which I'm not seeing at all all so i was just checking to make sure the fuel pump worked and uh i guess there's a little bit of fuel left in the tank because it just spit e85 everywhere oh it smells like alcohol in here now it smells good though because it smells like e85 but it smells like beer like corn beer beer corn Ugh. i honestly don't think there's much else i can do until i get an engine in here most of the wiring stuff inside of the cabin is already done it's just everything up in this portion now. So unfortunately, there's not much more I can do on blue until the engine comes back, except for body work, but we're gonna be doing that on Tuesday in its own video of just like how to wide body a car kind of thing. Uh, so for now, I need to actually jump back on this 04 STI real quick. The speed sensor on that thing died when the axle died. So I went ahead and got a brand new OEM STI speed sensor. Uh, would rather just have it all working for that. So that way when the buyer picks it up on Friday, everything is Gucci for him. So. Super easy, it's 117 mil. I'll show you where it's at if you have one of these older STIs. It's really not too bad to do. Let's go ahead, swap out the speed sensor. It is actually right there, right to the left of the turbo on the transmission. Uh, there's one wire harness that goes to it. I'm kind of, it's right here in the dark. So let me get that thing out, let me get it swapped out. The easiest way that I found to do these is to get a 17 millimeter crow's foot just run a long extension on it. And then there's one little spot right here on the speed sensor where you can get a actual wrench on there. So swap those things out real quick. Yep, see something missing? That's the new one. And no wonder it wasn't reading speed. STI is fixed, 100% solid, done, speedometer works. Everything is Gucci on this car now, so I'm not going to drive it, I'm not gonna to touch it. It's gonna to sit here until Friday when the new owner comes and picks it up. I got the WRX pulled in right now though, because I wanna fix the oil pressure sensor wiring. I believe it's just a bad ground, or it's not grounded properly, because sometimes it'll read voltage, other times it won't, but for the most part, the sensor is always on like 52 PSI. That, and side note, there's not much more I can do on blue until the engine comes back, so I'm not even gonna go back over there today. Um, tomorrow, Matt and I are going over there to go continue doing and finish the wide body, so I'm not gonna stress it right now. We're just gonna fix all the little problems on all the cars, which includes the WRX. So, let me dig into this wiring, see what I can find, try regrounding some stuff, moving some stuff around, and uh, we'll get it sorted. Legit, always just stuck on 52 PSI.
got the new wire ran through the firewall going to our oil pressure sensor. I had to remake the harness because the one, I, I'm pretty sure the problem was in me modifying the old harness. So I remodified a new harness and I'm pretty sure it works because now when I come in, it's either gonna work or it's not. Now when I come in here and I turn this on, it actually flashes zero when there's no oil pressure. Lambda still turns on. So let me get this thing started real quick and let's see if oil pressure works. <laughs> daddy -o. oil pressure's reading! Sick! I actually have a working oil pressure gauge now. That's so nice. All right, let me get this thing up to operating temp and uh, I wanna see what idle oil pressure is. Awesome to see oil pressure is coming down as the car is warming up more, so hell yeah. I actually got working oil pressure gauge now. It was stuck at 52 PSI for the longest time. All that is fixed. Dude, it's so dumb. I've become like a stickler in wiring. And I absolutely, I hate wiring with a passion, but I've become such a stickler for it. My forehead looks huge. I've become such a stickler for wiring now that it's just, it's something that just bothers the hell out of me if it's not perfect. So rebuilt that entire AEM oil pressure sensor harness and it works beautifully, functions as it's supposed to and it's no longer stuck at 52 PSI anymore, which is good. It's been kind of slow the past couple of days. I'm kind of at a standstill for what I can do. We go and pick up the FD on the 22nd, I think it is. I think it's the 22nd is when I fly down to California. Uh, got the tow and everything set up, got the trailer set up. We are gonna be doing a little car meet out in California. I think it's going to be in Eureka. So if you guys want to swing out to that, feel free. I will post more details on Instagram when the time gets closer. You can come check out the FD in person if you want before we tow it back up here to Washington. Uh, we're going to be going straight from California back up to Washington, I think same day. So it'll be a long day. We fly out of here at like 5 a.m. We'll probably get back at like night or so. It'll be a long, maybe two. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, with blue, we have the car now ready to accept the engine. Everything I have to do in the engine bay for wiring stuff is all done at this point. I can't do the engine harness stuff until the engine is obviously in there and I don't wanna put that spare engine back in. So I'll probably break it down, put it back in the totes and store it for a later date just in case we need that. This is a lot of waiting stuff right now. It kinda sucks, it's a little bit out of my control. So I'm gonna get creative with some videos, maybe toss in a couple discussion topic debate videos. Who knows? But that's all I got for you guys on this one. Good feeling to know that the WRX is finally problem free. Like all the little problems I've been putting off with it are done at this point, cleaned up and ready to go. That's all I got for you guys on this one. If you like the video, you know what to do. Go to hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be able to put it in one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace. Out, homies.